this interview because I, I'm not sure exactly what work-life balance is. I think it depends on everybody's individual circumstance, to be perfectly honest. I think if you are losing sleep at night, if you are uh, feeling really stressed out, if you just feel like you can't cope and you're you know, taking a kid to a, a rehearsal somewhere and you're, and you're worried because your briefcase is in the back seat and is giving you the dirty look that you haven't done the work that you needed to do for your office and you're feeling stressed out by that, I think you might be getting to a point where maybe the balance isn't there. But I also know some people who juggle a million different things seemingly in control. And I also know some people who just need to chill for several hours at night before before they can uh, crash. So I, I really do think it's a personal thing and it depends on your circumstances and it depends on, and achieving it depends on the different supports that you have or don't have in some cases. Now, you're definitely one of those people who's doing a zillion things and has been for a long, long time. And you've got three of your own children. So when they were younger, and, and even now, how did you go about trying to achieve work and family balance? Well, I was very lucky. And this is something that I think a lot of people don't understand. They look at somebody with a resume that has all sorts of things piled into it. But that doesn't happen by accident. And I was really lucky. I had uh, three kids with a husband who was at least as involved in everything to do with raising kids and household stuff as I was. Um, as we said, it's not a 50-50 thing. It's critical to understand that it's 100%, 100%. And so in our case, and, and maybe we were lucky because when we started having children, we were both students. And so there was never really an opportunity to start into the traditional gender roles, if you know what I mean. We just, whoever was closest to the diaper and the kid who needed one did that. Whoever was, you know, closest to attend to clean the toilet or take out the garbage, that got done. And so we started off very early with that. So that one was uh, one was very lucky for me. Um, I was very fortunate to have that in a in a in a co-parent, if you will. Um, we were also very lucky because we had grandparents who were also very supportive. There, there's something to understand though too, and I and and maybe it's because we had kids little or kids all kids are little. We had kids young. Mm -hmm. That was be, um, that we didn't really have a life of you know, going out partying and traveling and, and spending lots of times, lots of time doing other things that then had to stop. When our kids were little, we didn't spend a lot of time out partying at all. We didn't go out to restaurants. We were very much homebodies. If we went and spent time with friends, we took our kids with us. We, our social interaction was restricted to those kinds of events that you could do that. I know a lot of people who, when they start having kids, they go, well, I, I can't go out to the bar. I can't, I can't go hang out with my friends. I can't. And that's also a difference. And, and I think for me, although you look at the things that we were able to do during the time of having children, there's a lot in the background that we didn't necessarily do. And so when you talk about work-life balance, in our case, it was kids, and it was family, and it was what we were doing professionally. It didn't include a lot of social activity. It didn't include a lot of travel, in, in a sense, other than with kids. And so the balance means, I think part of the balance is, what is it that you're trying to balance? And if you're trying to balance everything, I don't, I don't think that's possible. Did you, do you have to make choices. Absolutely. Did you and your husband have these conversations prior to having your children about, you know, who's going to do what and this is teamwork or did it just come naturally to both of you? Our, actually, I was going to say our first date. Um, it wasn't actually our first date. It was our second date. But it was the second date where we covered all of this. And I've told this to so many people and they just, they're just shocked. Right? You talked about having kids on your second date. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and I, we both really wanted kids. We both wanted to make sure, and we, it's not like we went into the date saying, okay, let's check this you know, person out for, for their child-rearing capabilities, <laughs> but it was so important to both of us that it just came naturally as part of the discussion, and, and we talked about what we wanted. We talked about how many kids we wanted. Um, we wanted at least four, you know, minimum four, but probably six. Of course, after the third one came along, we said, oh, gee. Um, so... <laughs> 
But, but we absolutely, long answer to your question, but yes, we absolutely talked about this. We talked about having kids. We talked about how much we wanted kids. We talked about what was important about having kids. We talked about what was important in terms of raising children. Um, I am amazed at how many couples don't do that. It just seemed completely natural for us. And I have seen a lot of friends who they get together, they start having kids, or, it, or even worse, they get together and don't have kids, much to the dismay of one or the other, or else they start having kids and they are completely at odds. And it's not good for the kids. Uh, it's not good for the relationship. So I'm actually very proud of the fact that we did that early on, really early on. <laughs> Um, what are some, I mean, your, your kids are a little bit older now and I'm interested, has that sort of thinking rubbed off on any of them in terms of the whole piece about, you know, talking about these issues with prospective dates or future, you know, spouses and that kind of thing? Has it rubbed off on them? Well, I haven't sat in on any of their dates, mm -hmm. so I don't know if they've actually done this. No, thing. but I mean, do they ever, do you ever talk to them about it? Oh, oh, absolutely, and they and we laugh about the fact that that they were contemplated at date number two. Um, <laughs> but no, I think and, and you know, knock on wood, all three kids are are they're healthy, they're happy, they're well adjusted, they um, they're good people, they care about others. I, I'm I'm so proud of the three kids that we have. I mean, what parent isn't? But I'm really proud of that. Um, but I th also think a lot of that was because they were raised with. A certain amount of, um, I'm not usually at a loss for words, um, <laughs> just a, a sense of reality, a sense of pragmatism, a sense of, of down-to-earthedness maybe, I think, that uh, has has stood everybody, including their parents, in really good stead. I mean, their, their dad and I separated quite a long time ago after we'd been married 20, almost 21 years. Um, but it was a case of moving on in different directions, and it was perfectly acceptable. I mean, it always has its challenges for sure, and, it, and the kids found it that part difficult. But they were raised in a way that I think allowed them to handle that. What strikes you about families today, as you've met many across the country, that struggle with this issue? What strikes you about their situations? Which, the, the work-life the, balance yeah, issue? Yeah, yeah. What strikes me is that there maybe isn't enough analysis of what that balance means. So going back to the earlier comment, if your balance is that you somehow think you need to or want to be able to do everything all at the same time, um, I think you have to you have to think really carefully about what that is. There is it is in my humble opinion simply not possible to do everything. You know the the worst term I, I like that. The, the concept of superwoman drives me nuts because there is no such thing. We, each person has 24 hours in a day and we do with them what we choose to do or what we have been given to do, you know, because sometimes we have circumstances, we have to deal with issues, we have to deal with illness, we have to deal with parents, you know, elderly parents, for example, you know, many people are sandwiched in, in that sense too. So, so you, you either do what you have to do or do what you choose to do, but you cannot, I don't think it's at all possible to do everything all at the same time.